Hey everybody, Tony D. Little Jones asleep. I think on the couch. Yeah, she went to the couch. Um, just wanted to do a... It's not really a screenwriter's tip, but um, every once in a while I do a, a video about how to go to a con. Uh, con season is kicking up kind of again. We kind of missed it this year uh, with mostly everything being shut down for the summer. People didn't know whether or not to have their cons. You have to do these months and months in advance. But in order to, you know, the fall, the guys for the fall are opening up. And New Jersey Horror and Film Horror Con and Film Festival was opening, and they're doing another one in November. Uh, good con, had a great time. Um, but I wanted to talk about how to present yourself because uh, I was just thinking about it as I was sitting at the con and. You know, not to slam anybody who went to the con. Some people still to this day, and I and I talked about this with some of my fellow table buddies there, they still don't know how to do a con. <laughs> they still don't know how to do a con. And mostly it's artists. Now this is very prevalent in the comic book community. You'll have an artist, he'll do a show, he'll get a table for whatever reason, and he'll go to the show, and he'll do commissions, and he'll sit there and draw, and he won't talk to anybody. Now, I get it. A lot of people, uh, they don't like talking to people. They don't like promoting themselves. They feel weird about it. I actually felt a little weird about it in the beginning, too. But you get over it. You just have to keep doing it until you realize, oh, this is what you do. This is how you make sales. This is how you promote yourself. And that's what a con really is. It's really a promotion. It's, it's a networking opportunity. I actually networked fairly well at the horror con i was i was shocked i i wasn't really there to network i was there to sell the pineys i i'm mostly a sales driven guy but i'm happy to talk to people and um because i think i have a strong delivery now and i'm i try to be as personable as possible people just you know they'll gravitate towards me and say oh he seems like a reasonable guy let me talk to him he seems like a writer or whatever um because quite frankly uh, one of the problems at the show is people, they don't know who you are. And when I say they don't know who you are, they don't know anything, right? So I'll, I'll have a table with all my books. And I have a lot of books now. I have comics, I have the novellas, I have a game book, I have a few other things. And they'll see that, and they'll be walking by, kind of slowly walking past. They're looking, and you have to engage with them. Or they'll just keep walking. Because there are a lot of tables to see, there's a lot of stuff, they don't really want to spend money unless it's something they want. And if they don't instantly see something they want, they're moving on. So you have to draw them in. So the first thing you got to do is prep. Prep for a con, okay? So before you're at that point where you're actually talking to people, the first thing you have to do is get ready for the con. How do you do that? Well, number one, you have to go to the con. You have to call up conventions, email conventions, and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'd like a table for the con. Now, I try to get free tables. This was a horror con where I don't hold as much sway. At, normally, at a comic book convention, I can get a free table because I've written for The Simpsons Comics. And that's a big enough cred, generally speaking, for most comic book conventions, if they have guest tables available, to go, oh, sure, we'll give you a table, no problem. And it's a little more traditional at a... Um, uh, at a comic book show to give free tables. Um, the only people who really pay for tables, you pay if you're at a very big con, you'll pay for an artist alley table. Or if you're in a certain section of the con, you'll pay for it. Or if, you know, just the con is just too crowded, so they start charging people money to thin out the ranks. Um, but more often than not, if you're a, an illustrator, you can get a free table. Now, if you're a writer and you've written comics, you can get a free table too. If you've written books, it's a little dicier. Generally, they're willing to give tables to almost anybody in Artist Alley just to fill it up, uh, depending on the con. So you can generally talk your way into a table. You call up uh, or email and just be very, very honest about who you are and just say, this is what I'm about. These are my projects. You have to have some kind of product or project or you have to be coming out with one. Um, and generally, these people are very friendly and nice, and they'll give you a table. Um, and you want to be professional, present yourself. And if they say no, then 
you know, it wasn't meant to be. You just move on and find another con. Here in the Northeast, um, there are you could do a con almost every weekend. So that's for a comic show. Now for a gaming con, they're even easier to get, <laughs> quite frankly, depending on the con. Again, it depends on if it's a large show or a small show. I found that gaming cons, they're, they're bigger money, and they're, they don't even... I don't even think they charge the gaming companies for tables, quite frankly, because the big money is in charging the fans the entry fee and even charging per game sometimes. Some of the games are actually actually cost money to join and play. A lot of them are free, but, um, you know, so you usually pay big money up front, but you're playing games on weekend, and, and that's the point. So people are coming to a gaming con to spend a little dough. The downside of doing a gaming con, of course, is um, they're there to play the games. If you have a game for sale, the stuff you are selling, you know, they're not going to buy a lot of stuff throughout the weekend, generally speaking. Some people will, but most people will buy it all on Sunday if it's a three-day con because they're staying for three days and then they're going home. So if they have money left, they'll go through the dealer's room and maybe buy something. If you're a dealer, you'll probably pay for a table, depending. But if you're a creator, generally they're willing to negotiate with you for, at a gaming con. But you need to have something gaming related or, again, gaming credits. I have gaming credits, so that's like the second kind of con I do. Now, for a horror fest, that's a little different. Uh, I actually paid for a table there. Now, the upshot of that is that everybody at a horror con has money. Um, the fans that came in the room, none of them were broke. None of them. When you go to a, a, a comic con, generally the comic fans are broke. They are broke. No offense to comic fans, the fanboys, but um, <laughs> they generally don't have the money that the horror fans come. Because the horror fans, generally they're there to buy movies. And to buy just a DVD or even a VHS, some people are selling that. You need at least $20 in your pocket. Or you're there for autographs, and you're gonna, you know, click that up to fifty bucks to get an autograph for, you know, Billy Zane was at the horror con, so you're gonna have to pay fifty bucks to get his autograph. That's part of the deal. So there's, there's big money in the room. No one's, and it was thirty bucks to get in. I think how much was it to get in? Let's see. I think it was thirty bucks for the weekend. Tickets are available at the door for thirty-five cash only. Yeah. So. That's if you're going to pay 35 bucks just to go into the damn place, you're probably going to have a few hundred bucks in your pocket to blow on whatever because you're there for autographs, you're there for movies, or whatever. So, selling an eight dollar book in my case was no big deal, and in fact, I had a few sales like, Oh, yeah, give me all six books. Um, but um, you need to present yourself. That's numero uno, right? So once you get, in this case, for the horror con, you just buy the table. And in most other cons, you're going to buy the table because it's money. It's big money. And you need something horror related, right? You can't just go to a horror con and sell anime. It's not going to work. If it's not horror related, don't go. Um, it's very specific to the genre. But whatever con you do, number one, you got to present yourself. So that means you got to groom, have some good hygiene, shave, shower, smell nice, and look like something. Now, my look at the horror con, since I'm promoting the Pineys, was to wear my Piney Power shirt. Uh, I didn't wear my hat because I thought it would be too hot for that. Turns out it was freezing cold in the casino at some points. And then I just decided I didn't feel like wearing the hat all day. So I didn't wear the hat, uh, my hunter's hat. Um, and I don't know, I, maybe that would have sent a stronger message for the Pineys, but I was fine. I got a good backdrop now. So uh, that that was my look. You need a look as well. Now, if you're an artist, you don't want to go too fancy. I know some people very rarely will wear a, a suit. Um, that's, a, that's a little too nice for an artist. Like if you just wear a tie and dress nicely, uh, people like that. People like for you to be dressed nicely. You, sh you should, shouldn't look like a schlub, okay? If you have a look, uh, and what I mean by that, if you're 
I don't know, you're a Rasta. Rastas have kind of a look to them, right? Or if you're a, a goth kid, goths have kind of a look to them. Um, otherwise, you just need, you don't want to be sitting there wearing something that is distracting from what you do, right? So I had, I had artists who would sit with me, they'd wear a hockey jersey. That to me is the wrong message, unless there's something sports related. You want to send the message, hey, I'm an artist. Not, hey, I'm a sports fan and an artist. It's, you want to look like a guy who draws comics, or a guy who draws whatever, or a guy who writes whatever. Um, you know, you want to look uh, positive. You want to always be polite and positive. Even if the fans are in a bad mood, even if somebody says something nasty to you, you don't want to get into a fight in public. You want to be up, upbeat, positive about everything you're doing and you want to engage with the fans as much as possible. You're there to engage. You're there to get people to look at your table and look at your product, whatever it is. Now, if you're an artist and you want to take commissions, I'm all for that. But your primary goal should be to engage, not to finish your commissions before the con is over. Otherwise, you need someone else there to do the engagement for you. Um, my, my advice to you, if you're doing commissions, create a situation in which um, you'll either do work on the commissions at night in between the hours of the con, if you're really you know a stickler for work. Maybe you work on the commissions a little bit when things are slow to attract attention, but don't commit to yourself, well, I'm going to finish all the commissions before the end of the show, unless you have someone there to do the talking to the fans. Uh, I would suggest get there get their uh, address and phone, you know, all their address, all their information so you can mail the artwork out and include the postage in the price of your commission if that's an issue. Um, it, it, it's as simple simple as that. And then you could spend all week doing commissions and making money that you already have and collect the money ahead of time. Anybody who doesn't want to pay in advance, you know, what are you going to do? Are you either going to trust the guy or not? And then do the damn commissions. <laughs> Do them ASAP. Do them that week. Don't put it off. Um, you know, and do them. But you want to present yourself. Uh, you want to be friendly. You want to engage. Now, my thing is just to say hello or good morning to everybody. I have a backdrop. I have product. I say hello. If they, they'll, they'll look at me. They'll acknowledge me a lot of times. And then if they, if I see them look down at the product, I'll start my spiel. I'll say hi. I'm Tony. These are my books. I wrote them. And it's important for me to say, I write these books. And the reason I say that is because a lot of times people go, oh, you wrote them. <laughs> because I have so much product on the table, they mistake me for a dealer. And I don't want them to mistake me for a dealer or a guy who just sells for Tony DiGirolamo. I want them to say, oh, you're the author. So now you're important to the product on the table. Because now, it's not just that I'm selling it, I can also sign it. Because that's a big deal to fans, right? If you're an artist, it's the same thing. You want to say, hi. Get them to look at your art. Get them to, you know, if the, if the head goes down. If they look at you and go, hey, and then turn their head away, they're probably not interested. And you don't have to get bent out of shape and really, you know, don't do the hard sell. I used to do the hard sell, and I found it ultimately counterproductive. I used to be out on the floor with a megaphone screaming my head off and it was fun and I had a shtick but ultimately um, especially if you're a small operation the the shouting to the heavens doesn't work if you have a big booth then that's different if you have a big booth and you got four or five people to help you and you've got customers in 360 degrees around your booth set up then yeah do crazy stuff and attract attention because you'll probably have you know, four people doing sales while one person is attracting all the attention, or maybe even two or three, uh, doing the customer engagement to get people to buy the product. But if you're a one-man operation, and typically you are, or maybe you have your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever, you have to have a system down. And the system should be the talent, in this case it's me as the writer, it may be you as an illustrator, uh, doing what they do, and talking about what they do. And that's what people want to see. Now, I know a lot of illustrators out there, they don't want to talk. They just want to bury their heads and do a sketch. 
but this is part of the con experience for people. They want to engage with creators. They want to know what it's like. They're going to ask you the same questions all the time. Some of them will be rude and obnoxious. Do you make any money? Do you work for Marvel Comics? Where's the bathroom? I used to get that at a con. Uh, There's one particular con. I used to always get, where's the bathroom? <laughs> So what I did was I learned where the bathroom is and I would happily give them directions. And you know what happens? Some of them go to the bathroom and then they come back. Thanks so much for giving me directions to the bathroom. What are you selling? You know, you want to be part of the solution, not a problem. If you've got an attitude, you know, and I've had, believe me, I've had some weird people come to my table over the years to say weird stuff. Like if you have a person walking around the con and they're doing this, they're obviously looking for someone or something, and you've got nothing else to do, it's perfectly fine to go, hey, you okay? Do you need help? You know, and help that person. Like, oh, I'm looking for Tom Savini. Oh, I think he's over in the autograph section that somewhere that, down that way. Or, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know where he is. You know, you're there to provide customer service at a con, and this is your chance to interact with customers and create lifelong fans. You know, I meet fans all the time. I've seen at other cons, and they remember me, and they usually remember me pretty fondly. Um, I've never had a case where someone remembered me and said, oh, it's you, a-hole. Uh, it's usually, like at this con, uh, a, a couple came up to me, and I couldn't tell you their name if you gave me a million dollars. Unfortunately, I don't remember their names, but they were so nice, and I'm too embarrassed to ask about their names again because I feel like if I remember you, I should know you, and I don't. I'm just so bad with names. And I didn't remember their names, and I still don't remember what kind I met them out. Because I meet so many people. But most people are pretty forgiving for that. But um, they were nice enough. Uh, they said, do, do you need anything? We can get you a drink. I said, oh, I would love an unsweet nice tea. And I offered money. But they said, no, 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 we'll get it for you. And that was so nice of them. And I don't normally accept that, but, you know, for a drink, a bottled drink, it's fine. Um... But, um, you know, you just want to be a positive person. You want to be excited about your work. Number one, you want to be, if you're not excited about your work, why do you expect anybody to buy it? It doesn't make any sense. You have to be excited. Oh, this, this is my art, or these are my books, and I write this, and I write that, and then this is another thing. And you have to have, you know, you have to know all your product really, really well. Some people don't, you know? Um, I actually had to, look at my prices again because some of my prices on all my books I mean the pioneers are all eight bucks but woke stan is I think nine bucks and Holly woke is ten bucks so I had to look at the prices again to make sure I was charging everybody correctly because I didn't put the prices on the books Amazon didn't want that and uh, I probably should have put that on there now that I think about it but whatever um, so you you want to know you want to be knowledgeable you want to be polite and and funny and you want to cut your losses when somebody's not interested. Um, this is why you need something to hand out. Like a, I, I'm currently I have postcards. I don't have one handy, but I got this at the show. This is for a new um, platform called Slasher, which is like a Facebook for horror fans. Um, but my postcards are, are exactly like this, not like exactly like this, but this size, and they have the pineys on it and whatever. And you can just hand that out. You know, I do this book called The Pineys, and it has all the basic information on it, my websites, and then people can go there later when they're home, going through their various things. Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. He was nuts. Even if they don't stay at your table, because some people, they have all different situations. Some people got to catch a bus. Some people, you know, they caught you at a moment. Oh, I only got another t 10 minutes, and I got to get out of here because I got an appointment, or I got to meet people for dinner, or whatever. So you want to have that one thing you can hand out with your website on it or your email so you can contact people or they can contact you. Now, you don't want to give them your home address and phone number unless maybe they're business contacts and you're, you, you think they're kosher. But um, you want to have that ready to go so you can just hand it to people. So I printed like hundreds of, a few thousand of these postcards I have and I just hand them out at cons. And when I run out, I'll, I'll post, you know, I'll, get a different one made up maybe and hand them out. Um, at first I was going to make one for every cover of the Pineys and then I realized that would probably be too much. But um, yeah, so you want to have that. You want to have something to give away. That's a giveaway. I mean, some people like collecting postcards. They're cool and neat. I mean, 
you know, they're full color or whatever. Um, which is why I wanted to do one for every cover of the Pineys, but now I'd have six cards and which ones would I hand out? Uh, so, um, you want to have that to hand out and you want to be ready with change. You want to have change if you're, you know, you want to have all your prices, I realized over the years that you want it to all round down to a dollar so you don't have to deal with actual coin change. I used to actually deal with coin change and give people, oh, it's a dollar ninety-five, and I'd have to give people the nickel and that was like a nightmare and I'd have a big change box and I'd have to run, you know, I'd, we'd run out of nickels and they'd have to go, oh, don't worry about it. I mean, now these days people are like giving me tips of a dollar or two. Um, it's all often good now that I've been in the game, as it were, were for a while. It's often good to have a freebie or something you're willing to give away, something you have too much of. You know, I have a few comics that, you know, I just got to give them away at this point. They're they're not really sellable items for me. You know, I still have issues of the Travelers, and I love the Travelers comic. I love all my comics, but, you know, I, I, I just, I got to give them away now. I give them away as, you know, incentives to buy my stuff, or I use them as sales for, like, kids, because the Travelers is fine for kids. Um, I gave away copies of Rodney the Alien that Smoked Pot this time, because it's a horror crowd, and that was, they're a little more adult, so I figured, yeah, let me give away that. So if somebody gave me an extra dollar or two, it's say, oh, here, take a free comic. And then they feel like they got a little extra. Or if somebody tried to negotiate with me for, um, you know, like a price discount, I really couldn't do, I really can't do discounts on the books. So, um, but the comics I made, so I can do whatever discounts I want, and I'm already discounting a few of them. So uh, I just give away comics. And uh, I've got too many in my basement anyway, so why not? Um, if it helps me get a bigger sale, then that, then all the more reason to do it. Um, you want to make friends with the people at the nearby tables, to the left and right of you, especially, because if you're by yourself, like I usually am, uh, you may need to go to the bathroom, you may need to take a break, you may need to go get some food, and you want people to be friendly towards you so you can say, hey, I gotta go get a drink, will you watch my table for a few minutes? And they'll be, oh yeah, sure. If you're not talking to anybody, you know, you're, you're going to have to ask that cold, and you don't want to ask that. Plus, if you're friends with people, you start making contact. So I had a guy to the left of me named Chris and his sister Dawn. They have a thing called uh, Buffalo Bills, and it was, I think they licensed the Buffalo Bill character from Silence of the Lambs, and they do some sort of, uh, like, hotel retreat I don't know if you go to the house or what, but um, it's all based on Buffalo Bill, and they were selling lotion and little, little, little fake stuffed dogs. It was kind of funny, um, and so they were very enthusiastic and relatively new and very professional. They had like a nice professional setup, so I was friends with them, and they they knew everybody uh, because a lot of people are some people are just better at networking than I am. I mean, I'm just really terrible at it. So if you can make friends with someone like that, even just temporarily at the show, I'm, I'm not like, I mean, I don't know them that well. Um, you know, they're happy to go, oh, hey, uh, you know, here's my friend Tony next to me. He does the Pineys books, if somebody mentions like the Jersey Devil or something. So, you know, through him, I was meeting other people and I met the guys from, uh, I think they're called 365 Horror, South Jersey Jason. I, I think I'm gonna be doing their podcast. I sent him an email. Uh, I got to meet a guy who might be having me rewrite a screenplay. So you can network if you're talking. but And you're there to mainly talk and get exposure. Uh, you're there to make sales so you can pay for your table. Better that you, you know, especially if you paid for a table, right? If you pay $250 for a table, you got to make $250 to just break even on the table. And plus, if you got a hotel and you drove there and you got food, and you have to incorporate all that into your expenses. Don't just say, oh, I made $50. Isn't this great? No, you didn't make $50 because you have to incorporate the expenses it took to get you that $50. So, you know, a lot of illustrators I know are very reluctant to charge for their illustrations very much because they don't feel they're worth a lot. But you have to factor in what it costs you to go to even a con you got a free table at. 
right? So it's gonna cost you 20 bucks on gas. It's gonna cost you, it cost me $11 one way, two ways, no wait, two ways, for tolls to and from Atlantic City. Yeah, New Jersey. Uh, so uh, it cost me $8 a day for parking. So in just one day at the con, it cost me $19 plus gas, plus food, and I packed my lunch a couple of days um, just to go there. So I'm into it for 30, 40 bucks just to go there plus the table. So to break even at the con, I needed to make at least 300 bucks, which I, I did. I did pretty good at the con. I mean, I'm definitely in the black for this con. Um, and you want to think of it that way. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't go if you're not making tons of money. But just understand that if you're going to cons and you're losing money and losing money and losing money and losing money, you got to start analyzing it. Am I getting anything out of this or am I just losing money? Right? If you're not at least getting good exposure, you know, as an illustrator, if you're not at least networking into some job that eventually turns into something bigger, maybe you get some free product to sell. Like if you do illustrations on a comic and then get... 50 free issues of the comic, you have those comics to sell, even if you only sell them for a dollar. I mean, that's 50 bucks, right? So you got to look at this from a capitalistic perspective and try to make some money out of it, even if it's only a little bit of money. Um, and you want to make money because money makes things real. In the world of creativeness, yes, I know, when you're just starting out, it's fun to work with people. It's fun just to be in it. But if you're not making money, it's just a hobby. So if you're going to be serious about it, you have to start doing the business end of it. And that doesn't mean you can fall into the trap of doing nothing but business and ignoring your creativity, but you have to analyze everything in these cons. And is it worth to do? Like if I had gone to this con and made $50, I'd been like, no way am I ever doing this con again. Since I went there and grossed uh, I don't even know what I grossed, but I, I, I don't want to, I actually, I do, but I don't want to say, uh, but I definitely was in the black. I definitely made more money than I put out. So, um, this was a good con. I can say that I could say I want to go again and I don't want to do it in November cause I just did September and it's only two months and it'd probably be the same people or very similar. Um, but, uh, you know, I would totally do the con next year. Absolutely. Absolutely, next year, and I'm I'm very up on doing more horror cons just in general because, you know, I haven't really done a lot, and this was a good show for me. You know, if you go and spend three hundred dollars at a con, and that doesn't even include you know, and then you add hotel into that, you're into it for five six hundred bucks. You got to make you got to make bank, and you got to have enough uh, product and whatnot. So, just another lesson on how to do cons from Tony D. Um, and that's it for me. I'm going to end it here. Joan's barking at something and we'll see you in the next video.